Hi, I'm Rich Bertram. I'm a student here at Skagit Valley College. This is my uh, former instructor, Mike. Um, we're tackling uh, the King's Pride Rudder Project. I took this on because uh, I've got a boat of my own that's really old, about 50 years old, and I'm probably going to have to do the same thing. Uh, so we started off, we took off the gudgeon, the gudgeon from the skeg on the King's Pride. Uh, that was a a fair bit of work. It took us what, about four hours, three hours? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. A little bit of time. Yep. Next uh, thing we had to do is we had to take out the quadrant, and this is why it's important to, uh, to do this every now and then. You can see all the corrosion right around here where the uh, quadrant attaches to the rudder post, and it's uh, probably was going to fail eventually. There's a lot of metal gone from this. Uh, the next part of this project is going to be getting up in there and removing the rudder post. The rudder post is actually four inches too long for us to drop the rudder right here on the stands so we got three options we can either dig a hole in the concrete uh, get a travel lift out here or cut the rudder post and then reattach it later so we're gonna cut the rudder post and then reattach it you got anything Mike? well I'll just butt in here for a second the this is a typical setup for a skag hung rudder with a gudgeon fabricated out of silicon bronze and a pintle from the rudder shaft coming down to receive it. And basically there's uh, a bearing on the bottom, four bolts, two coming from each side that needed to come out. And then, because you can see that this little recess or whatever you want to call this, this extension from the skeg, slips into the gudgeon boom it's it's lathered up with uh with an epoxy filler shoved up in there and through bolted so in other words once we got the bolts out it was still stuck we couldn't get it off a little bit of heat on the gudgeon expand the silicon bronze down she came all right well after some experimenting we we're ready to rule that the thermal image camera was not the magic that we were hoping for. Not 100% positive that it's not because of the bottom paint that's on here. But we were hoping to see some kind of structure show up with the camera that Mike's holding. And that was to no avail. So, <laughs> next step is something a little bit more uh, intrusive. And um, where do you think we should drill our first hole, Mike? Well, we know that there's probably, there's, there's nothing below here. The, it's either a, a flat bar or a solid plate that is making this rudder. So right around in here then? Yeah, I can, yeah. You feeling good about that? Yeah. Okay. You want to lay it? You, you okay there? I'm all right. Okay. And it's in pretty decent shape. Yeah, that's what I did. We couldn't even begin. So now we got to de go deeper right until we find a structure. But when? I think so. Just do it. Drill out a little bit. Okay. Am I helping by standing behind Yes, this? you're okay. helping oh, yeah. by making holding sure. it. Otherwise, he'd be going in circles. I was making sure. Okay. Need, why don't you turn it a little bit? So we could it, lay it down on the... Uh, we could lay it down on a bench, too. Yeah, I guess we're not heating it anymore. Yeah. Why don't we do that? Well, let's yeah. bring the cart over here. and. Cart, after a forster bit. Ah, here we go. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. So it's magnetic or it's not magnetic? It is magnetic to some degree. It's just not. Maybe low grade stainless? Probably. That's a lot of work. So. I don't know, man. That's. I bet it's black iron. See, I made up a word too. So, black like butter well to stainless real good. Yeah, oh yeah. So, and as long as it's buried. 
So we just need to take now an auger up into here to where the weld seam is and make sure that it hasn't been compromised or cut this hole up here closer to the weld seam, right? That's what we need to see. Or do you think we got enough investigation to say it's, I don't think that stands for sure. Though. That's I think I'd like to see I think we should the weld another seam. hole right here. Another, just make another round hole. I'm with you. We want to see that weld. I want to have a picture. I want to know that that weld seam is not compromised. Ah, and if it is okay. not compromised, I see no trouble with just glassing this rudder again. The only, just, the other only thing we could do would be to uh, cut right here and take it, take it all the way out to the, to the pry seam. It off. You know that, Mike? Well, why don't we just do another hole? And yeah. Then, but yeah. then. Yeah. We'll, we'll connect the two and, you know, it'll be yeah, an yeah. oblong patch or whatever. Yeah. So that's the concern is the weld. Can I go up here for you? Is, yeah. that the, is that the whole point for this, Mike, is to check the weld on yep. this thing? Okay. So I'm going right over that weld seam probably right there, don't you think? Yep. I mean, like the whole project. This is to check. Okay, so this is good. Uh, what'd you do here, Art? <laughs> I saw you with a drill. It's your fault. Drilled one hole. <laughs> one hole only into this and uh, discovered that it's some pretty high density foam filling. Uh, it looks to be a single blade that runs the length of the rudder that is what uh, is actually attaching the blade to the shaft. So as the shaft turns, it's what's doing the heavy lifting. We were able to core again closer to the shaft to inspect the weld. It looks to be a pretty continuous weld, the length of the plate, which is good. I don't see any deterioration there. Um, and definitely no signs of moisture. I'm worried that when we were first thinking about, oh, I think the rudder's full of water, the, uh, it might have just been water that was in the, in the tube and in the bearing leaking out around the gudgeon. Maybe yeah, that's yeah. what it was. And you can see that all tube, no watertightness into the bottom of the gudgeon, so that Pinto was absorbing water through the gudgeon, wow, and, and it, went, it goes right up to the water line. And it's just sitting there. Yeah. So we'll explore the lower end, and then we'll go up here and do a, a, a cut here just to see. Just do it right up next to the shaft and the well, like this right here, and see if we have yeah. moisture. Yeah. Yeah. So worth doing both sides. 